Hey everybody, what happens when we take a piece of 6061 T6 aluminum and a piece of 4130 chromoly and decide to make some parts? You get these. So how did I do this? Stay tuned, let's find out. Okay, let's jump in here. So basically these are going to be hard points um, using this aluminum and uh, steel for my wing. So let's look at the wing real quick. And if you look at where the wing's going to attach to the fuselage uh, from the struts, I have to uh, make aluminum uh, parts basically. Same thing with the hard points that connect to the fuselage. And then I have to make the hinges or the, the steel for the hinges on the uh, ailerons. So let's zoom in here and look at this. Now, I did modify this a little bit from the plans that I'll show you here in a minute. And the reason I did that is I've seen some other air bike people didn't want to put that bolt right through the middle of that spar piece of wood there. So if you look at where that bolt lies right now, uh, the middle bolt, it actually impedes into that uh, piece of uh, Douglas fir that is the spar. So by moving it up about, I think, three quarters of an inch is what I did it puts it up into that uh, piece of wood that goes between the top and bottom spar. So let's look at the, uh, basically the, uh, what I call the hard points, which is what connects uh, the um, aileron to the wing. And that's the aileron hinge that I gotta make. And there's one here in the middle. And on the plans, they show you cutting a little slice in this where it slides into the aileron. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make an access point on the bottom of my aileron so I can get in there to that bolt and nut and uh, put the uh, aileron on and off. I'll show you here in a minute with the plan, the way that looks. But I, I've had other air bike people tell me that they are doing the same thing I'm doing. And uh, after all, it's what holds your aileron on. So those are the, basically the three parts I'm making. Um, and it's what holds my wing on and holds my aileron on. So let's look at the drawing first. And uh, when you when you look at this right here, you see at the top it says cut out. So basically the ends of the aileron are hard mounted, but the middle one would slide into that slot and I didn't like that. So I got rid of that. Here are the um, root, fi root fittings or what I call the hard points for the uh, wing to cat attach to the uh, aileron. I mean to the, the wing to attach to the fuselage. Here I take everything into CAD. If you followed me and been one of my fans for a long time, I like to redraw everything in CAD. These are some of the parts I extended by three quarter inch. And uh, I, uh, I just feel better taking everything into CAD because I can get it into my head exactly how I'm gonna fabricate it, drill it, do all the different things to it and make it work. Um, I know people say that I'm adding a lot of steps to it, but that's just the way I do it. Then I make a actually a 3D printed jig that I can put on the aluminum and then use my center punch to punch exact center holes each time. So if you look at this, I, I actually get a mark with the uh, magic marker where um, my cut line has to be on the ends and then where the center punch holes are. This is what the 3D printed part looks like in my slicer. And if you notice, I created little valleys and that helps align my center punch so that my center punch is always in the middle of that hole. So let's zoom in here and you'll see as I bring this down to like the first couple of layers, there's the small uh, 1 64th of an inch hole I want for my center punch to hit. And that way, every time I, I put that in there, it, it hits it perfect. And uh, uh, this is just some of the stuff I love to do with my 3D printer. So I drew this part in CAD, took it into Fusion 360, made it a 3D part, and then I printed it on my Prusa and used it as a center punch. Now I want to show you a little tool I make. So get a piece of aluminum and a quarter inch bolt and some washers. You're going to drill a hole and tap the aluminum so that um, you can take your part and put it on there as kind of a hinge. And the reason you're doing this is I'm going to put it in my mill so I can mill a perfect um, uh, end on the part and get that perfect circumference. But first we're going to drill some holes. Um, one thing I really want to point out to people, and especially if you're a novice, you can have pretty high RPM when you're cutting um, 6061 T6 aluminum because it won't heat up your bit that much. Okay, I always put a little drop of oil on there. Um, it could be motor oil or cutting oil or whatever you want. 
but I always just uh, put a little oil on there. But think about the RPMs of your bit and how you're treating your bit. When you're doing steel, like right here, I get the RPM really, really slow, and it does take a long time um, to drill the hole. Okay, it might take maybe 30 seconds or a minute, maybe two minutes, depending on how thick your steel is, but your bits are gonna love it. Um, I learned this the hard way when I was younger on how to take care of my bits. Um, if you ever see a lot of smoke coming off the bit from the oil, you probably are just creating too much heat. Um, definitely if you see the bit turning red hot or see the part turning red hot, because I've actually melted uh, the tips of my drill bits. But um, just take your time and let the bit do its job. Get the RPM. And I'm talking getting the RPM down to like 200 RPM or um, I think this is 200 RPM right now or maybe it's um, 300 RPM. But, um, but with aluminum, I'll cut it 2,000 RPM. But with, when you're doing a, hard, uh, a harder steel, like a uh, 4130 chromoly, you without a doubt want to just slow this bit down, let it do its job, and uh, your bits will love you. And uh, I should have put a timer on this to see how long it really took on this part, but it's, um, it's about a minute, I'm thinking. And um, it's about ready to go through. And right about now, it goes through. When you see those little curly cues coming up. Now we're going to uh, actually look at the way I use this little tool I made. And it's to uh, basically put the perfect um, uh, circumference or whatever you want to call it uh, at the end of the part. Now this is the... Um, 4130 chrome molly you want to be really careful that you're always moving the tool so it's cutting against the bit um, you'll notice in a minute here i have to stop and readjust the head of my mill because there's a big allen wrench that i tighten that down with but this uh, 4130 sometimes when you're pushing against it will start to move the head and i had to stop and tighten it all up real tight and um, uh, you can see where i'm starting to cut into my aluminum on my tool there so it's moving around on me a little bit. Please, people, be really careful when you're doing this. If you ever cut it with the tool, which and what I mean is the rotation of the, the mill tool, you always want to be cutting against it. If you go with it, it can grab the tool, flip it around, and just start yang, 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 gnawing up the, the part you're making. But it could also maybe pull your hand into it. So be extremely careful, okay? You'll notice my hand's at the end of the moment of this part I'm making. Now, right here, I'm readjusting um my uh mill head a little bit because it started to move around on me again and uh you know um my mill isn't the most professional mill in the world so sometimes i i'm probably pushing it a little bit when i do this stuff but as you can see uh, the parts are really starting to create the end that i want um aluminum and what you're going to see here in a minute cuts like a uh, like butter but the, uh, the steel, you want to take your time and remove a little bit of material at a time. Okay, aluminum, you can take a lot more. But when you're doing steel, just take a little bit at a time uh, and, until you get the uh, radius you want. And, uh, you know, just take your time. This is all about taking your time. Um, there's no race here. There's no rushing it. Um, that's pretty much all there is. And... Uh, Right here, when you get down to the end, you get all the way up against it right there, as close as you can. And then you get your final cut, and the part's pretty much done. And uh, you just want to be really careful, everybody. Now, here's the aluminum, and I brought the camera to the other side of the mill because I kind of wanted you just to see a little bit different angle. But this aluminum, as you watch me go here, it, it goes there pretty quick. And, um, but you always want to go against the cut. You don't want to go against, uh, with the, the direction that the uh, mill tool is spinning or the cutting tool is spinning. And uh, just take your time, everybody, and these parts will turn out gorgeous and uh, they'll work perfect for the plane. Um, but just, you know, just take your time. I mean, as you can see here, I had a lot of these to make, but. You know, if it takes me a whole day, it takes me a whole day. I just put on some music in the background and I just get my tools and I start, uh, you know, I just start working on it for the day. And uh, as you can see, it's really starting to turn out to be a really nice radius right there on the end of that tool. 
Now, when I was done, the steel parts I primed and painted, and the aluminum parts I just cleaned up. So here's the finished parts. They're gorgeous, they're virtually perfect, and I couldn't ask for anything more. Hope you enjoy this video, everybody. Have a great day. Rock on.